Hello everyone, welcome to Tableau Server and the Cloud Admin Talk. My name is Mark Wu. I'm a Tableau Server Admin, a Tableau Visionary, and also this talk lead. Today's topic is a connected app. That is a feature um, released a few months ago, maybe a year ago. I don't know, Jeff knows more than me. Um, Jeff is going to show us how it works in the real world. I'm excited to learn from Jeff uh, because myself, I have not done the connection app yet. Just some quick logistics. Everyone is muted during the whole session for better recording quality. Please use QA button to submit questions at any time. Of course, everyone is welcome to answer any of those questions as this is a community event. And Jeff will try to answer um, all your questions um, at the end with a dedicated QA time. Do we record this session? Yes, the recording will be available at YouTube. And also I do have a link uh, for the where you can find this recording and also you can find all the previous recordings. Let me put, post the link in the chat. Without further ado, uh, Jeff, take it over, please. All right. Uh, so you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Cool. Uh, so I'm really happy to be here and share my experiences with the uh, connected app. Uh, it was first introduced in uh, December of last year. And uh, we got started with it right away uh, because we were encountering some uh, problems with what we were trying to get done. And uh, Connected App was a really, really great feature. Uh, and, and so we wanna share with you our learnings uh, and uh, you know some of the um, you know, uh, mishaps that uh, came about uh, with, because that's really, real world experience and then hopefully that's how uh, everybody will go and learn and uh, be able to implement it yourselves and then give feedback to uh, Tableau as well. So if you haven't figured this out on this picture, uh, this is me on the arrow and to my right is uh, Mark. Uh, this was, I think, uh, probably, yeah, it was before COVID. So maybe it was the 2018 or 2019 conference. And then we actually got to uh, see each other at uh, the conference uh, this year in uh, Vegas. And uh, we chatted, uh, compared notes a bunch and all. And that's how, kind of how this uh, session came about on the connected app. So really happy to be here again. So a uh, bunch of this will uh, be demo, but uh, uh, first just a little bit about me for those of you that might not uh, know me that, uh, you know, I like things to always go smooth on a straight line uh, to the uh, finish line and all, uh, but then, and uh, that includes when I'm out biking, uh, you know, uh, uh, flat roads around where I live in uh, Chicago and all. Um, but then quite often it's the case, especially when you're doing a lot of I'll call it innovation work and a lot of uh, 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 you, you like change and you like to be a disruptor and all that, uh, you know, things are always going to be on that uh, smooth line because there's going to be dips and uh, valleys and uh, mountains to go uh, conquer and all. And, uh, you know, this happens uh, whether it be on our personal uh, basis, uh, uh, you know, on the right is a picture of me that, uh, you know, when uh, I saw this picture of the uh, biker and it reminded me of in reality a few years ago, I uh, fell off my bike and I uh, broke my shoulder. And uh, so, you know, things happen on a personal level, but then also things happen on, on the work level, whether it be a career over the long haul of your um, career or whether it be uh, specific projects that it, you're working on. So, 
you know, um, I want to share a bit about uh, the reality that uh, we encountered and uh, hopefully everybody can go uh, learn from that. Uh, so, you know, it, because it's all about innovation and kind of like uh, uh, figuring out uh, what are next steps and how to eventually get to the finish line. Okay, so uh, then this is uh, the topic for today is the connected app and embedding. And I like this uh, metaphor up top that, you know, there's a lot of documentation out there, but there's only so much that you can go and learn out of the uh, books or blogs or uh, Tableau documentation that's out there. And really uh, the uh, ex practical experience uh, counts for so much. Uh, so then uh, what we'll do with the connected app and embedding is we'll go over what is it and it, I'll just start off with getting out of the PowerPoint and doing a quick demo of uh, one of the apps that we've initially deployed. Uh, and I'll just show you uh, like some test data that's out there. And then I'll give what I call a, a brief history lesson and kind of like the need for change of like why in my viewpoint, like why the connected app uh, uh, functionality came about uh, last December and how we got on board with it. And then we'll go over the nuts and bolts, and which will be another uh, demo, and then kind of like what to watch out for. And then uh, questions will be after that. So if I get out of here and then go over to my browser. Um, so we use Okta uh, within Epsilon, uh, where I work at. And uh, then uh, this is uh, what, uh, what an Okta login page looks like. So, you know, I could go into our Tableau production environment or Tableau dev, or we also use this as objects, uh, but that's besides the point that uh, we're trying to get rid of that. Uh, but then, it, uh, and there's a lot more applications out on Epsilon than this, but this is what I have access to. And then when I go click on this one, this goes into our front end application for integration uh, testing, which is our uh, loyalty app. And when I go there, um, let me see if it will work or not. Um, it will not. So here, just hold on with, with uh, I have to start a fresh browser, sorry about that. Okay, so it's working now. So uh, this is uh, 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 one of our applications that we use for our loyalty business. So, you know, if you go into, let's say, Walgreens and you swipe your uh, loyalty card, uh, then Epsilon is the administrator of the program for Walgreens. And then uh, uh, it's one of our many, many clients. And so then there's a lot of functionality uh, within um the loyalty uh, app, such as uh, being able to manage or manage customer lists, being able to do some program setup, uh, being able to uh, go in and uh, uh, set up uh, new offers to say, you know, let's say Dunkin' Donuts come in and get a free donut, uh, you know, if you come in before 5 a.m. or whatever. Uh, but then, um, and, and this is actually externally accessible to our uh, clients. Uh, so they can go log in here, but then this is just an integration uh, testing area here. And uh, what you just saw uh, that may not be so noticeable, but even though we're not within our Tableau server, we went and rendered uh, all these uh, indiv individual dashboards on here that have uh, various different uh, KPI Type metrics such as uh, member sales, member transactions, uh, number of uh, people enrolled, uh, 
contactability, which uh, is never 100%, this is just uh, test data that we're working with. And uh, these are all individual dashboards here um, that are kept within our uh, Tableau server. And uh, we can go change the program up here. And then we could go change, uh, let's say the period unit over here to let's say quarter, and we can pick 2022. And then we could pick, uh, let's say the first quarter of 2022, and then we can compare it to uh, the previous uh, period. So when I go hit apply, then it's going to go uh, re-render all these dashboards. The reason why they're not all one dashboard is because within uh, the program setup, the uh, users basically have the option to say, I, uh, I don't really care about, let's say, program size because it's blank. So they can go into program setup and go and hide uh, certain metrics and be able to show other metrics that are out there. So um, uh, anyways, um, it shows uh, all these KPIs here, out here. And then like if there's a goal set, this is another dashboard that's basically a progress uh, bar that uh, shows this is current, uh, this is the target, and this is the ultimate goal. And then, you know, I could go in and edit this. This is non-Tableau functionality. This is part of the application where, that I could go change whatever. I'm not going to go change it at this point. And then there's additional uh, uh, drill downs uh, within here. So, so like if I want to see additional uh, details of underneath any of these metrics, I could go over here and go to member sales details, which is what we call layer two. So it shows some geography and then uh, uh, show uh, some graphs around like the types of purchasers, types of tiers, um, and then uh, by uh, location. And, you know, we could view it by store state code. We could view it, let's say, by store name, right? Um, and then, you know, we, we could do it breakdown by uh, tier code, let's say. So it, it's all good stuff. It's all uh, dashboards that are built within our uh, Tableau server itself. And then uh, th uh, basically uh, the uh, connected app enables the seamless uh, sign-in authentication for the embedding uh, API. So this is all using the embedding API version three that was rolled out in uh, December. And now I think Tableau has rolled out either, for, I think version 3.2, which we're not on yet but uh, we're going to get there at uh, some point. So that's a quick demo of um, uh, one of the dashboards that is out here. Um, and then let me just go back over to here and run current slide. Okay, so um, that's basically what, what is it? And then uh, if we, go into a brief history lesson uh, that, uh, you know, uh, when I first came onto the team, which was like the, I think the middle of last year, uh, I've been with Epsilon for about eight years or so, but uh, then I was part of a different uh, uh, team of Epsilon, uh, which is called Conversant that uh, has their own uh, Tableau uh, deployment. And then uh, Conversant already has a client access portal and uh, we deployed this trusted authentication method. So I presented this as an option uh, to do the seamless sign-in authentication um, uh, to the, this new Epsilon team that was embedding loyalty and all these other uh, uh, product dashboards within the applications themselves. And, uh, then basically the way uh, trusted authentication works is that the uh, client browser makes a request to the application web server, which then in turn uh, makes a request to Tableau server and with, uh, to go get a ticket, which is then returned to the web server, returned to the web browser. And then basically the session is set up at this point. Um, and then the web browser can start talking with Tableau server at all. But then uh, the problem uh, with this approach in the new world that uh, we live in is that um, trusted authentication requires whitelisting of 
all the IP addresses, which worked, I'll call it like six, seven years ago when we initially set it up in the other part of Epsilon. But then it doesn't work so much in today's world where there's a lot of uh, AWS cloud deployments out there, including our front end applications. And with the cloud deployments or even Docker deployments, uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, auto scaling happening with dynamic IPs. So uh, that's why uh, trusted authentication uh, ended up not working uh, for us. So then we went and discarded this and basically kept looking. So option two, uh, because we use Okta and Okta uh, basically it fronts uh, identity management for the front end application. It fronts identity management for our uh, Tableau server. And uh, then we're like, okay, you know, uh, as long as you're already logged into the application, Okta should understand that you're already logged in and uh, just be able to go uh, render the dashboard. But in uh, reality, uh, what happened is when the dashboard was embedded within the application and you clicked on uh, uh, what, one of the links to actually get to the dashboard, then it would uh, come up with this page saying, sign in to the Tableau server. And uh, then uh, the, uh, one of the requirements was to be able to do a seamless sign in. So that uh, ended up not working. So then um, what we found is that uh, within Okta, there's a uh, little option called allow iframe embedding. So we uh, propose uh, enabling the uh, iframe embedding because all the Tableau dashboards are within an iframe. And then uh, the sec our security team uh, would not uh, allow that because of this little message down here. Enabling this feature can make your organization susceptible to clickjacking attacks. So that uh, option ended up uh, being discarded. So then uh, basically uh, option three uh, uh, was I'll call it creative networking, where uh, basically uh, goes back to trusted authentication. And uh, if we didn't have the connected app, uh, then this would have would, would have been what we ended up uh, going with, where basically you put in a uh, uh, load balancer in front of your tablet server that the web server uh, talks with, and then Basically, the load balancer is just whitelisted onto your uh, Tableau server, and uh, then uh, the load balancer uh, is handling uh, the traffic between the web server and itself. But then it uh, introduces additional complexities that really are needed. Uh, so then we ended up uh, not going with this. But if it weren't for a connected app, we probably would have uh, gone and stuck with uh, this option. Uh, so then uh, the way to go is uh, the connected app and uh, a little history that up until October of last year, we were on Tableau Server 2020.3, which uh, became out of support, I think in September of last year. And so then we upgraded to 2021.3 in October of last year, but then we encountered uh, uh, around the December timeframe, these issues with uh, log4j, which was, I'll call it a fun December of last year. So then uh, we ended up um, in December, uh, which is really unprecedented for us because we're in change freeze and all, but log4j was also unprecedented that we actually upgraded to uh, 2021.4 uh, in uh, December of last year, which uh, uh, came with the very, very first version of the uh, connected app. Uh, so then uh, we ended up um, going forward with that and uh, we, we kind of had a decision to make of, did we really wanna upgrade to the first version or not? But it all ended up uh, working out uh, for us. Um, and then uh, basically uh, this picture looks kind of similar to the trusted authentication picture, but it works a bit differently where, you know, um, th there's an, an initial registration of the connected app itself uh, 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 with Tableau uh, uh, to 
Oak Creek was called connected app of shared secrets that is then shared with the custom application. And then basically uh, when the custom application is rendering your dashboard, this line doesn't exist. Uh, all, all that happens is that um, it goes and uh, it uses that uh, shared secret uh, to go and uh, generate what's called a JWT uh, token uh, that then is uh, when then, uh, uh, um, basically uh, the JWT token is then passed up to the client browser. Uh, and then the client browser basically uses that JWT token to go start the session. And uh, then uh, the, the communication just happens between the browser and Tableau itself at that point because the session is started. So that is a little bit about the architecture. And then now we get into the nuts and bolts and then we'll just, uh, we'll go through these first three steps uh, initially, which is creating the connected app, uh, kind of like the basic way of doing things. And then there's other uh, more advanced ways, uh, which I call it intermediate and, and advanced down here. Uh, but then uh, there's basic, uh, the basic way is three steps, create the connected app, uh, build a JWT, and then pass this JWT within the embedded application itself. So if I get out of here, and then uh, let's see, I'll go over into here. Um, and then let me just close that. Yes. Sorry, fresh browser. I'll go into our Tableau uh, development environment. I'll say it was interesting uh, because uh, when it was first rolled out back in December, uh, the documentation said it was rolled out for Tableau Online, which is now Tableau Cloud. Um, but uh, the interface was not rolled out for the server on premise, which is what we have, which is actually in the AWS cloud itself. Um, so then, uh, but they said, uh, okay, you could go and call the REST APIs to go and create your connected app secret, uh, which is kind of like the intermediate way of creating this connected app. But uh, basically, uh, if I go under here on settings, and I'll just start with this, that we're on 21.4.2 over here. And uh, there is no uh, section on here called uh, connected app per se. But then uh, here's a little tip for everybody. If you happen to be on this release of uh, Tableau server, uh, then there's a little secret. Uh, I think some of the visionaries call them Easter eggs. And that I actually found this Easter egg around Easter of uh, this year is that if I come here and I uh, put in this on the URL itself, back here, and then I that. And if I go over here to settings, then uh, because I added uh, this little, uh, um, whatever you call it, um, parameter onto, the uh, Tableau server, uh, the connected app over here magically went and showed up uh, as uh, over, over here. Uh, so it's a little hidden feature that uh, was made available in future releases of Tableau server. But basically over here, if I do, I could give the connected app name, test one, two, three. And then when you're creating a connected app, it, uh, you, you could, apply certain uh, restrictions onto it to say, does it apply to all projects within the site or only certain projects? And um, you, so you could pick a, a project name itself, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it at all projects. And then you could apply it onto uh, all domains that are making the request of the connected app, or you could only do only specific domains. So it's based on security for your company itself. For right now, since this is test, uh, just leave it at all, all domains. When I hit create, 
uh, what it did is it created this connected app called test123 that has this client ID, which um, I could take this uh, client ID, um, but then uh, I'm gonna go generate a, a new secret. And uh, then uh, the secret has been generated. So there's really three parts of this shared secret itself. Uh, there's the client ID, there's the secret ID, and then there's the secret value, which is right here. Um, and that's really step one, is it creating the connected app itself. And then step two, I'll say um, is, if I come over here, um, actually I have it open already, is creating this JWT token, which uh, for uh, demo purposes, I'm just doing uh, within Python, but within our uh, main application, we're actually doing within Node.js, but it's just easier to show within, um, within uh, Python itself that uh, basically um, there's uh, this, uh, this uh, connected app, uh, it, uh, IP is right here. And I just blanked it out because I really shouldn't be showing it. And then here's like the secret ID. And then here's uh, the secret value uh, that I'm blanking out. Uh, but that's, um, okay. And then, uh, there's other stuff within here that says this JWT token is valid for uh, however many minutes that you put on in here, the maximum uh, being 10 minutes. So I put that uh, within there. And then the audience is always a constant of 10 low. The subject is who is actually logging in. So for test purposes, it's just me. And then uh, the scope is Tableau views embed, but then there's a few different values. Like if you want to go and uh, embed metrics or the uh, later versions of uh, the um, uh, connected app has, uh, you know, authoring that you could do within the embedded API itself and all. Uh, so um, uh, basically, if I go over here and I just do like a generate uh, token, and I just do it like this. Does it seem to be working? Uh, let, let me get out of here. What's that? Uh, nothing like demos, right? Okay. Let's close this. Okay. Here. Just exit it out of here. I just ran it this morning. I know what it is. Um, Um, yeah, okay, uh, I, I was leaving out of Python. So uh, basically it generated uh, uh, this token here, um, which is the uh, kind of like a compilation of all the secret ID and secret value and the connected app ID and the, uh, my uh, user ID and uh, like the expiration time and what have you. So like if I just do like test.txt like this, it just outputs to this test.txt file here. And um, I'll just copy it from there. And now if I go into here 
and I'll just open this with Visual Studio Code. It's just going to mess it up and do work prep. And just uh, so this is uh, what uh, is called uh, the embedded uh, API uh, version three, where basically you specify uh, the uh, embedding API library up here. And then uh, Tableau introduced what they call this new uh, component called the Tableau Viz component, uh, which is a lot more simple than the JavaScript uh, component. And uh, then uh, basically it uh, contains the URL of what you're trying to render. And then you can put in other options in here, such as the toolbar equals hidden and height tabs. And then you put in the token over, over here. Um, and to show you this first, like if I get rid of this token altogether, and now open, it's going to ask me to go uh, sign in to uh, Tableau server, which is not what we want. So if I undo that and leave the token within there and do open with any luck. Yep, it works. So it, it's just uh, displaying a very, very small dashboard with this uh, key metric within it. And then this down indicator to say that uh, minus 66% of this year compared to uh, last year with an absolute uh, number within there. So this is uh, the, basically the gist of, of uh, the basics of the connected app and uh, it being able to insert that token uh, with, within here. Um, so, but something, uh, a challenge that we ran into uh, in our uh, deployment here was that our uh, uh, business user said, well, that's great, Jeff, but we really want to be able to display a bunch of dashboards uh, that all have their own uh, URL uh, within um, Tableau server so that within the app interface, we, we can go and hide them. Uh, so then uh, basically, if I go open up this one here, um, so uh, we, we tried to do uh, something like this. So like if I just uh, generate a, another token here, this token and you and do this. And so basically the first uh, viz has the token within it. And then all the other vizs uh, do not have uh, tokens because it's assumed that like the first one will go uh, do the authentication and then all the other ones can, can go and carry on after there. So then if I try and run this one, it goes and renders this one. And then basically all the other ones uh, say sign into People Cloud Insights because they're all trying to render at the same time. So then, um, you know, there was nothing within the documentation per se to say, okay, if you're rendering more than one dashboard uh, within a uh, page, how do you best go about handle it? Uh, so then uh, we ended up having to, um, play a lot, uh, and I'll just say, uh, to eventually get it to work. So like the next one, uh, next example that uh, to show you here was uh, to say, okay, uh, this one, we're going to go generate a, a unique token for each of the uh, visualizations within there. Uh, so if I just get out of here, close that window, and um, come over here, it's many, okay. And um, then I come here and uh, just for ease of cut and paste, I, I included the visualizations within here. Each of these have a unique token on them. And I 
come here and I do something like that. And now I go and render uh, this one. This, I think, actually works. Um, and if memory serves me correctly, like if I hit F5 or like hit this little refresh on here, then it, it worked the first time, but it didn't work the second time because like it came back with this connected app code uh, within here um, for like all the uh, subsequent ones to say that they've already been rendered. And then what we found is that, okay, um, uh, when we were within our Tableau admin uh, server console, uh, looking at all the active sessions, each of these unique tokens essentially went and created a unique session within our uh, Tableau server. And then uh, when we had something like, you know, our, our testers were having like 18 dashboards within uh, the page and trying to render all at the same time and then like uh, keep uh, doing it over and over and over again. And we had hundreds or thousands of sessions, then uh, bad things started to happen to our Tableau server that they couldn't quite handle all these sessions. So we figured that was not uh, the way to go. Uh, so then basically uh, then we went, uh, we, we have two more examples here. Um, we went uh, to this next one, where basically um, what we ended up doing was we said, okay, what if we just use like the same token across all the dashboards? Uh, so if I just do this one more time. And come here and I'll just take one of these tokens. Kind of good. Okay. Um, and then I try and go render this one. Then, yeah, it gave me on one of them like this 191, which, which if you look up the connected app uh, errors, 191, it means that the token's already been used. Um, and then it went and rendered one of the dashboards and then this one came back with 191 as well. Uh, but then I, I'm told from uh, the Tableau connected app engineers that uh, this really shouldn't happen. I think you're supposed to uh, be able to uh, go and use the same token if you're uh, rendering many visualizations on the page, but then we're not quite on that release yet. Uh, so then what we ended up doing, uh, which was our ultimate solution, was this. And uh, this is what we call a little complex uh, workaround. Uh, let me just do this one more time. piece in the token here. Uh, so uh, what we end up doing here is that we end up on the first page just at, uh, uh, rendering like a, a blank uh, uh, dashboard within here. And then um, uh, if I open up this, uh, this JavaScript here, which is right here, then uh, what we end up doing is an event listener and like on the first bit size known, or I think we could have used first bit size interactive, then we're uh, went going to uh, render all the other dashboards. So basically if I go run this, and then it comes up with this little message that we did within JavaScript and uh, then that message goes and disappears once all the uh, dashboards go and render. And uh, then um, 
based uh, all the dashboard is linked and rendered. And even if we hit F5 or this refresh, then it uh, still works. And uh, that's how we ended up ha having to handle uh, all the multiple dashboards uh, within one page. And it works uh, really, really uh, well for us. So that's ultimately uh, what we ended up going with. But then, it, so if you have uh, multiple dashboards on the same page, you could do the same method, or you could do what I call the same token with multiple visits, uh, as long as you're on one of the newer releases of Tableau itself. Uh, so that's uh, the demo of like, uh, and the rundown of like doing a simple one or doing uh, uh, multiple ones. Um, and then I'll just show this that uh, create the connected app uh, intermediate and the advanced. Um, so uh, the, the bad part about doing the basic method is that, uh, you know, a server admin has to go into the console and create uh, the connected app uh, secret and uh, ID and what have you, and then uh, go and pass it off to the application team. But then uh, uh, we really um, said, we want the application team to go and be able to generate their own connected app uh, secret. Um, so then there's a couple of ways. The first way is within Python itself, if I have one of these, I do, uh, and then I'll just take it from here. Um, where are you? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, UI. Uh, so what? Um, this is a demo, right? And Try one more time. Okay, well, uh, oh, uh, I, I forgot the actual site code, which is the uh, parameter. This one was. Okay, so what uh, Python does uh, is I, I went and wrote this routine before we even knew that the app interface existed, but the REST API methods existed out there, and it goes in. Uh, generates uh, the secret ID and secret value and the, the name of the app. And here, here's the, like the connected app ID. And uh, within here, if I just open this with Visual Studio, uh, you see that there's these different methods for being able to sign in to Tableau server, get the project, create the connected app, and create the connected app secret and do the sign up. So this is a, a basic Python uh, routine itself. And um, it worked uh, really well for us, uh, it be especially before we knew the app interface existed. Um, and uh, I was up late at night working on this and it was kind of fun. Uh, but then we said, okay, in order to be able to do this, there's uh, credentials within here, which is within this config file here, um, that uh, for each application we need, uh, we could give them this Python, and uh, but then they need a server admin ID and we're on subscription uh, based licensing and we really didn't want that. Uh, so what we ended up doing was uh, kind of this more advanced method where basically we created an API that they go and call that uh, I, I'm within Postman that I'll just go get this. Um, okay, so our uh, dev server seems to be down right now. There's some work being done, but basically there's this OAuth token that uh, we use to go authenticate. And then uh, there's this uh, call connect app create and then uh, within the body, we pass like the site ID and the application that we're uh, uh, creating the app for. And then when you hit send on here, then uh, basically what is returned is the connected app uh, value and the secret ID and secret value. Um, and then uh, basically it enables our uh, applications team, teams to go call this API endpoint and not have to have a server admin ID within our uh, server itself because they're just calling our APIs that have all the REST API 
directly within Tableau that is owned by us um, to be able to do everything. Okay, so that is that. Um, and then we'll get to questions. So, oh, uh, 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 just a couple of things to watch out for is what I call pre-existing tokens and mixed embedded and non-embedded. Um, so what I mean by that is if I go back into our application just very, very quickly is something that uh, we're dealing with on our end right now is when we go into the application itself uh, and there's this embedded uh, experience that is going on, uh, uh, basically uh, there, uh, what we call the sandbox link that's up here. If I go and click on uh, the sandbox link, then what happens is it goes and launches our Tableau server, but there's, I'm not sure if you saw, there's an unexpected error that came up there because it's saying, okay, the scope of this embedded app token is for only doing embedding. And now uh, you went in, uh, uh, went into like the non-embedded experience. Uh, so ultimately what we plan to do is replace the sandbox link with this list of uh, uh, non-embedded dashboards that users have access to, which will require querying the workbook REST API. And then um, they can go and uh, uh, just uh, not have to go into Tableau server at all. So, so that's the first thing to go watch out for is kind of like the uh, mixed experience, I call it. The other one to watch out for is when you're already within your Tableau server, it's kind of the reverse, I'll call it. And I go into the staging uh, site, and then I go over here into the embedded app, which is a different site. And then uh, it won't know what to do. Uh, because it says, oh, well, you already have a token uh, which uh, is on the staging site and, you know, we can't go and find uh, the, these dashboards that you're talking about on the staging site. It doesn't know uh, to go re-sign in for the embedded application itself. Uh, so that's just a couple items to watch out for. Um, and uh, here's the end result architecture where uh, Basically, we have uh, the site creation, uh, out, which is another API that we have, and the connected app that uh, is kind of done ahead of time for uh, provisioning of the sites itself. And then uh, this is uh, uh, through Okta getting into the app itself. And then the seamless uh, site authentication happens here uh, to the uh, Tableau server. Uh, the query user, I didn't talk about, but you know, if within the JWT token you pass a user that doesn't exist or doesn't have permissions, then you get some login error. Uh, so uh, prior to generating the JWT token, we uh, call the query user API uh, to go uh, verify that the user exists. And if not, we uh, uh, provide a more friendly error message for them. Okay, and uh, I think that's it. So, Mark, do you want to go through questions? Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Go ahead. Uh, in the QA, you can also see those questions, Jeff. If you click QA, there are a bunch of questions waiting for you. This is an awesome presentation. You gave me a lot of more uh, confidence for me to create my own Connect app. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, for sure, for sure. Okay, so could you please paste the uh, Easter egg here? Um, do I still have it? I think I have it somewhere. Um, I keep it. Uh, we, we, we use a credential keeper called uh, KeePass. I use that too. <laughs> oh, you use it? Yeah. I um, use it for 10 years. Uh. Yeah, it, it's very, very uh, useful. Um, and then within connected app, I have. 
this appendix here. So here it is. Um, some questions. Um, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> um, anyways, is AVI V3 production ready or only for beta? Yeah, the uh, embedded API, I think they're, they've released uh, version 3.2 already. We're right now using version 3.0, uh, which was released in um, December of last year. So how do you resolve uh, uh, 185 error, even though when I checked all credentials are correct? I forget what 185 means. Um, so uh, we could look it up. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that one. What differentiates the embedding API versus the JavaScript API? So um, the JavaScript so the embedding API uh, version three is really the newer version of how you go about doing embedding. And there's some really good uh, uh, sessions that you could probably watch from the uh, Tableau conference that JavaScript API, I think was on version two. And they're, you know, um, I think they're switching to the embedding API is like the more newer name of like how they go about this stuff. Uh, so hopefully that answers that question. We want to upgrade our server from 20.4 to a later version. Should we migrate to 21.4 or 22.2? Um, so um, I would uh, suggest go uh, for the newest uh, version of Tableau server. And I think uh, the Tableau public, Tableau cloud is on, 22.2, but then like for um, on-premise type deployments, I think the latest version that's available right now is 22.1. Uh, so 22.1, one. correct. As a, right, that's because, the first time you're using, yeah. Yeah, be, because they uh, switched to only a twice a year cadence for yeah. releasing major releases. Um, for those plan to think about 22.1, after I upgrade my servers, um, super smooth. I don't see almost any issues. Yep. Yep. So good. Uh, it's the public Postman collection that we can use to see all the possible API requests. Uh, I don't know of a Postman collection. Maybe there is one out there, but you know, I just generally Google Tableau REST API and then uh, the documentation comes up for the REST API and then I plug in what's needed. Can, you can dynamically generate the tokens and use them subsequently in the same code, correct, using JavaScript. Um, so I, I generated the tokens in Python and then uh, just plug them for demo purposes into HTML, but our application teams that know uh, web development a bit more than I do. Uh, I think they're uh, generating the tokens in Node.js, and then they're you know they're not cutting and pasting like I do. They uh, know how to take that token and paste it into the HTML or Angular or wherever it needs to be at. Um, so it's just a variable. Can you the token expiry time? Uh, so. Uh, the uh, maximum token expiry time, I think, is 10 minutes um, uh, from the last time. That I don't know if they change it. So uh, you could adjust it lower than that if you wanted to. Is there possible to get through API to import into other website? Do um, you understand that uh, question mark? I'm not sure I understand it. Details and uh, lists of site users have access and lists of work users have access. I'm not sure that I understand that one. We'll skip that one for right now. How is this embedding API version three different from Tableau Lightning web component if we want to embed dashboards and Salesforce? I don't know. Uh, we don't use Salesforce. But I do know this, that uh, the connected app was uh, created the embedded API was created uh, because the uh, Lightning Web Component might use this embedded API and the uh, uh, connected app underneath uh, the company, um, is my guess. 
is there a way to use connected apps to work on the entire site rather than connecting by site? I, the way that I'm aware of it is that it's by site. Um, that's how a lot of stuff works within there. Yeah, makes sense. I feel more safe by size. <laughs> yeah. Right. Tableau REST API Postman collection is here. So there's a bunch of, oh, yeah. So thank you, Ping, for. Thank for, you, Ping. Yeah, for uh, somebody that was asking about uh, collections that are out there. Is there a mechanism to refresh the connected app tokens? And I'll just say, uh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, for demo purposes, I didn't do it, but like within node.js, they're uh, refreshing these connected. Uh, uh, maybe you're talking about the connected app secret itself, I'm guessing. And uh, that connected app secret, there, there is some rotational uh, thing available within there uh, to go and rotate uh, the secrets. Um, and then, uh, let's see. How do I, uh, you know, I'm still here, right? Yeah, chat. Uh, in the chat, I'm just gonna go post uh, this in there for who, whoever was asking that. Um, and then um, oh, we were gonna look up this connected app 185, because I know I've seen it before. So there's all these error codes that are out there and 185 is could not fetch JWT keys, could not find the secret to resolve this issue here by the correct key IDs using the JWT header. I'll just say this, that uh, within um, here, yeah, um, oh, within here, uh, you have to make sure uh, it, it, the syntax of like getting all these different fields correct is uh, uh, Tableau is very picky about this. So uh, make sure that uh, you're including everything proper in here. Otherwise, I could talk to you offline about it. Okay. Um, and then is that all the questions, Mark? Or are there more questions? No, no, that's all the questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, the way uh, you showed us today, I'm, I'm very impressed. It showed us uh, the different options and um, how you came to your um, current uh, solution. I'm, I'm very impressed. Thank you very much. You, this was saving me a lot of time, actually. Oh, sure. yep. And I hope uh, everybody got a lot of use out of this. You know, um, thank you, Max. And this one, uh, this, Arn is saying it doesn't see the connected app heading. You, you need that uh, clause that I put within uh, the chat itself as an append uh, to go uh, see that connected app section within there. Um, yeah. Right. Our tablet server is internal to work. Does this need ex external exposure to work? No, it can uh, work, definitely work uh, internally as well, as long as you're on 21.4 or later. Okay. Cool. I think that's all. That's the top of our. Again, Jeff, thank you so much. This is awesome. For sure. Yeah. It's Everyone, thank you for being here and have a great day. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay.